from the corona pandemic. God is good. And all the time, God is good. As we worship on this beautiful day, I invite you to turn in your Bibles to the scripture that was read for your hearing this morning from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 14 through 30. Matthew 25, 14 through 30. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five talents saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master and the one with the two talents also came forward saying master you handed over to me two talents see i have made two more talents his master said to him well done good and trustworthy slave you have been trustworthy in a few things i will put you in charge of many things enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gathered where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was mine own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given. They will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Don't sit on your blessings. 
Let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather here, we seek your anointing upon us. Speak a word of help. Speak a word of hope. Speak a word of healing that we may experience the wondrous blessedness of your presence, your power, your promise, and your provision. And now bind us together in cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together in love. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. Don't sit on your blessing. In these verses leading up to this parable, Jesus had been responding to the disciples' request about when the end of the world would come and when the kingdom of God would reign and be established. In Matthew 24, Jesus tells his disciples all the signs about the end of the age and then goes on to instruct them that between the current time and the end time, they had work to do. In the meantime, he uses a series of parables to teach about the necessity for the people of God to be faithful, wise, and responsive to the work of building the kingdom of God. The parable of the talents is a reminder that we will stand before God for a final audit on what we have done in terms of the work that he has given us to win souls for Christ, to build the kingdom of God and to make a difference in the world as we glorify God. And so we will be asked to give an account for ourselves as to whether we have run the race of faith or whether we have sat on the blessings and gifts that God has given us to glorify and praise his name. And so in a world of corruption and callousness and chaos, now is not the time to sit on your blessings. In a time where people are feeling lost, alone, left out. Now is not the time to sit on your blessing. In a time where our communities are dealing with drug addiction, food insecurity, employment instability, financial and economic uncertainty. Now is not the time to sit on your blessing. In an era of lack of confidence in our government structures and social systems and educational and medical and law enforcement institutions, now is not a time, church to sit on your blessing in a time when people need a word from the Lord, when sinners need to know that there is a rock and a refuge, where believers need a hope from on high. Now is the time 
not to sit, but to run the race and to use the blessings and gifts that God has given us to glorify his name. Are you with me today? We are facing challenging times that threaten the stability of our nation, that threaten our family, that threatens the church. The question for the church today is, what is God calling us to do and to be? And are we equipped for the challenges that we face? Are we willing to take risks, to make sacrifices, and to go out on a limb for God? Are we willing to step out of the box, step out on faith, in order to carry out the mission and ministry of Christ. I believe that the scripture that was read to us prevents a challenge to the church and to the individual Christian to make the decision to serve the Lord and to do his will with the blessings and gifts that God has given us. And so today's lectionary lesson points us in the direction of understanding the danger when our interests, our interpersonal relationships, our investments, and our integrity are not kingdom focused. Each day that we live is a blessing from God. How many know you've been blessed today? Each day is a gift from God. How many can give God thanks for the gifts that he has given you today? Each day, when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we ought to do is thank God for the blessing. Saying, hallelujah, God, you are worthy of the praise. We have been given gifts from God for equipping the body of Christ, for building the kingdom of God. The challenge is not to abuse them, misuse them, or not even to use them for the divine purpose for which they were designed. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14 to 16 tells us, do not neglect your gifts which was given you through a prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. And so everything that we have is a blessing from God. And God has not given us these gifts for self-centered, self-interest, and self-elevation. God has not given us the blessings and resources that we have solely to serve our own needs. God has not given us talent, skills, and abilities so that we can sit on them and be warming the pews. No. He has given each of us designer gifts. I like that. You have designer gifts, specially made for you, uniquely made for you by God, so that you can use them to his glory. In the gospel lesson that was read for your hearing, this morning, we are transported into a teaching moment in which the Lord of life provides divine inspiration and instruction. And in the parable, Jesus taught that we must use our gifts wisely. As we examine and excavate the text more carefully, we see that there were three servants who were given financial resources to manage according to their ability. One servant had five, another had two, and 
one servant had one. However, although the parable uses money as a prop to make a point, the parable of the talents is really not about money or making money. It's about our inspiration, our incentive, our interest, our intention, our interpersonal interaction, and our investment. Those are some eyes you need to write down. I'll say them again. Inspiration, interest, interpersonal relationships, and investment. And so our readiness, our responsibility, and the results form the context out of which this parable is giving. The, you see, church, the blessings we've received from God are not ours alone. God gave them to us for the purpose of serving him and serving God's people. Each of us has something to give. Each of us has been blessed. Uh, you may not be a preacher, but you may have the gift of talking to people. Uh, you may uh, be a quiet person, but you like uh, reaching out and touching people's lives by sharing what you have. Whatever your gift may be, it's a blessing from God, not just for you, but so that you can be a blessing to someone else. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 13 says, the gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the full measure of the stature of Christ. So it doesn't matter whether we've been given great gifts, talents, or abilities. What matters is that we use them, whether they are large or small, to glorify God. The parable of the talents is about risk, about responsibility, and about results. One of the challenges that are presented in the text is the inequity of the spiritual gifts that were given. In other words, one was given five, one was given two, one was given one. Unlike the Luke version, where all the servants were given the same amount, the Matthew text has each of the slaves receiving a different amount. There are Christians and churches that have a lot of resources. Then there are some that have little resources. There are some churches that are storefronts. There are some churches that are mega churches, big cathedrals. But the reality is that it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. It matters what's in your heart. You can have a big building and all the people come into church and not be a Christian or not know how to love one another. Or you can be in a storefront and the spirit is free. The people are loving and caring and giving and understand that the blessings that they have are to be used to glorify God. One of the most tragic things in life is a person who lets the opportunities to give pass by, to serve and to sacrifice because of paralysis. They suppress their opportunities. 
because of fear. They hide, they hoard, or they hold out on God. Sometimes we survey the external circumstances of our life and we find that we allow those circumstances to dictate right and limit what God can do in and through us. I am sure that we can in some way identify with this slave, with the one talent. I'm sure I can. You know, I dream of having the talent of LeBron James, no, Michael Jordan, because Michael Jordan is the real GOAT in my mind. I love basketball. I wish I could jump like Michael. I wish I could dribble like Michael. I wish I could shoot. I want to be just like Mike. But God didn't bless me that way. Uh, now when I go on a basketball court and play with my kids, they call me old school. They run circles around me. And I can't talk trash like Mike. Uh, but that's all right. I love basketball. So it doesn't matter. I'll go out there and if I got to knock them down, if I got to foul them a little and give them a little shoulder here and there to show them the old school move, that's all right because I love basketball. God is asking you to have that same level of passion that no matter what your gifts are, that you do it out of the love that you have for God. Are you with me today? And so as we reflect on the text that highlights these four issues, inspiration, interest, interpersonal interaction, and our investment. Inspiration is essential if we don't want to sit on our blessing. According to the dictionary, inspiration means the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially to do something creative. And so no matter what it is that you're doing or creating, you usually need something to inspire you. The slave with the one talent had no inspiration. Therefore, he limited the power of his own potential by digging a hole and burying the talent in the ground. When your inspiration is God, however, you need to understand that you serve a mighty God. You serve a miraculous God. You serve a marvelous God. And so you ought to not bury your talent. You need to let God use your talent and unleash it to his glory. I like what Corey Ten Bloom said. It. She said, let God's promises shine on your problem. Or listen to what Max Licardo put. He said, God never said that the journey would be easy, but he did say that the arrival would be worthwhile. Many times because of a low self-esteem or feelings of inadequacy, we place limitations on what God can do in, with, and through us. We feel vulnerable to our insecurities and deficiencies. We are weakened by an I can't mentality or a never done this way attitude or uh, it won't work. But we who are children of God need to understand what Joan Rivers said. She said, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is God's gift. That's why we call it the present. I'm reminded of the story of the little engine that could. I remember growing up on that story by Wadi Piper. It's a story of a train that had a self-esteem issue, struggled with the challenge of climbing up the mountain. I remember well uh, the 
story with the little engine saying, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. It's the same with us as Christians. We as Christians must have a faith that says we can do it. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can climb the highest mountain. We can go through the lowest valley. We can make it through the storm. Why? Because God will make a way somehow. Secondly, the reality is that the master left and journeyed away raising the question of interest and how we respond when we feel like God has abandoned or is absent from us. What do we do when we experience that sense of absence? Almost every one of us at some point in our life will go through a period of dryness, of spiritual desertness when we feel disinterested, when we feel indifference, when we feel complacent or apathetic, our, our spirit is low. You see, church, there will be times when life gets hard. There will be times when you have to struggle in the desert, but that's the time when you need to hold on to God tight. That's the time when you need your faith to go into action. That's the time when you need to point your interest to the cross and remember, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. And that's the time to remember your relationship with the Lord. In other words, you didn't get to where you are by yourself. There was a praying mother who prayed for you. There's a father who provided for you. There's a teacher who guided you in the right direction when you were feeling uh, that you were wandering all over the place. There was a pastor who counseled and encouraged you. And there was a church who supported and empowered you to be the best you can. If there is anyone who deserves the credit for what we have, where we are, and the accomplishments that we have gained in life, it's God. He is the one who showered us with blessings. He is the one who opened doors that were closed. He is the one who shielded us, who protected us, who showered us with blessings, who defended and sealed us with the promise of the Holy Spirit. So don't be afraid. Don't hide your talent. Don't sit on your blessings. But this is the final I. Invest your blessings. Invest them in the work of building the kingdom of God. You see, I am glad of this scripture found in Matthew chapter 6 says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there is your heart also. You see, beloved, you can dream about, study, and research about how to uh, gain financial stability, to make corporate investments, to accumulate wealth, but the bottom line is this, they are all temporary and will eventually pass away. But when you make a divine deposit 
in the bank of God's amazing grace, I'm a witness. Your account will never run out. Your balance will never be zero. Your checking and saving count will never become overdrawn. Demonic creditors with charges against you will never be knocking at your door because the Lord of harvest, the King of kings, the Alpha and the Omega, the author and the finisher, the rock of all ages will return someday. And not only will he return, but you will receive a great reward. When you make your deposit in the bank of eternity, if you are faithful, God will take your blessings to the next level. God will unleash your blessings beyond your imagination. And so, beloved, make your investment count. Invest with your vote. Invest with your voice. Invest in God's vision, God's people, and God's church. Don't sit on your blessings, but count your blessings. Name them one by one, count your many blessings, see what God has done. Don't sit on your blessings, give God your highest praise. Do I have a witness here? Because when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Don't sit on your blessings because black lives matter. White lives matter, Hispanic and Latino lives matter, immigrant lives matter, our communities matter, all lives matter in God's kingdom economy. Don't sit on your blessing because when you give the best of your inspiration, your interest, your interpersonal interaction and your investment, God will provide. God will turn your investment into an eternal windfall, into divine dividends, into blessed bonuses, into sacred surplus, into permanent payouts. If the Lord brought you out, don't sit on your blessing. If the Lord rescued you from the pit of despair, don't sit on your blessing. If the Lord kept you in the midst of your storm, don't sit on your blessings, church. If like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God brought you out of a fiery furnace, don't sit on your blessing. If God brought you over the mountain and through the valley, don't sit on your blessing. Make an investment, an internal investment. I'm reminded as I close of that beautiful song. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Don't sit on your blessings. Run the race to the glory of God and use your blessings as an investment in building the kingdom of God. And in the end, you will get an eternal reward. Remember the words of this poem as I close. We have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon us 
We can't refuse it. Didn't choose it. But it's up to us to use it. We must suffer if we lose it. Give an account should we abuse it. Just a tiny little minute. But eternity is in it. Don't sit on it. Your blessing. Amen. As we go to the throne of grace in prayer, I invite you to reflect upon those eyes as the guide. as the guide for directing your life towards the work of running for Jesus. That's really what those who had the five and the two talents did. They ran for Jesus. They didn't sit on their blessings. They ran with inspiration. They ran with interest. They ran with interpersonal interaction in order to increase the blessings. And they ran with making an investment in building the kingdom of God. What is God challenging you to do this day to his glory? I know we all have needs, wants, desires, and interests, but God is saying to us, especially for such a time as this, that we need to redirect them, not for selfish aims, not to dig them in the ground because we are afraid or fearful but that we may take the risk, take the responsibility and trust the results. Let us pray. Gracious God, speak to our hearts to stay that we may live lives that are pleasing in your sight that you may have thine own way lord have thine own way thou art the potter we are the clay Mold us and make us after your will. While we are waiting, yielded and still. Take our faults and our failures. Take our mistakes. Take our issues, take our drama, and let us put it in your hands and trust that by faith through grace, you can do great things in and through us. Help us, O oh God, to trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And so as we gather here in your name, we want to hear at the end of the day, you say, well done, good and trustworthy servant. 
enter into the joy of your master. But until that day, may we work, fast, and pray. May we worship in spirit and in truth. May we run the race and keep the faith. May we be a witness for our Lord. May we serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Know that the Lord is good. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. May we live to your glory. All this we ask in Christ's name. Amen.